Welcome to our sunset safari on, well, a good Cato day. It's a perfect start for Cato day since we have the lions on the kill. Now, my name is Tristan and on camera today I've got Senzo. And remember, this is a live interactive experience, which means hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or the YouTube chat should you want to ask us any questions or if you want to just let us know where you're watching from. Now, the good news is the buffalo is still here. The cats are still here. Those two that we've been seeing over the last 24 hours, they're here. But... The best news of all is that it's not just one Birmingham this afternoon. We have all four lying about. The rest of them are behind me, lying in some thickets. We don't really have a visual of them now, but I'm sure as the afternoon wears on, so they will meander in and start to feed off the carcass. You can see the carcass is still full, 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 full. They have hardly touched it during the night, so the addition of the three boys that arrived here at about 5, 6 o'clock this morning means that I would imagine this evening there might be a little competition over the carcass. So it's going to be a wonderful afternoon to spend with our Birmingham boys and our Inkuma Lioness. Funnily enough, our Inkuma Lioness only just arrived back. She's been away the whole day they said this morning she left and she went towards the cubs and she's only just got back as we arrived here and so that's why she's tucking in and feeding so much it's also the conditions are absolutely perfect for a lioness to feed it's cool it's overcast there's no hot sun bearing down on this lioness she doesn't have to worry about the heat and so she can really get in stuck in and consume as much as possible and keep that nutrient level up for the milk that she's giving her cubs. The positive sign is that she is leaving and going back, which means those cubs seem to be absolutely fine, and they will be getting, probably having fat tummies along with their mother, because as she eats like this, she's going to be converting it into really good, thick nutrient milk that's going to be able to be fed to the cubs. And so when she goes back, those little cubs will be benefiting from that, and will be getting nice and full. Now, I don't suspect that we will see her I'm moving back towards the cubs anytime soon. Now that she's here, I'm sure she's going to have a really good feed. And if she's just come from suckling them, then she knows that she can spend some time in this area. So she's really going at the carcass. She's going to get as much food as possible. But look at the power that she's got, even when she's on her back like that and she's pulling. That carcass is moving. And I can tell you from being near a buffalo carcass and trying to drag a carcass, it is very, very difficult. These buffalo are heavy animals and dead weight like that is just insane. So to watch these lions drag it around every now and then is just absolutely incredible. You can see in Suku in the background, he's passed out at the moment. He's really not interested in what's going on. He's tired, sleepy. He's walking fine though, which is the good news. So for those of you that were worried about him yesterday when he was limping, this afternoon he got up and he walked over to the grass where he is now and there was no discernible limp at all. So he's looking okay. There's the wound that we were talking about, just under the armpit. And it's not going to be a very nice place to have a wound. It's going to rub a bit raw as he walks around and probably get a bit irritated, but he should be okay. Like I say, there's no sign of any injury to the leg itself. And so just like the Nguma female with her hole in her tummy, it's just about time and waiting for it to heal. She can actually hear her breathing. Isn't that cool? It's amazing to actually hear her. Now, I'm not the only one out here on this beautiful cat today. There is another member of our team, the one who's got a bad back, and now we've decided we're going to call him Brokeback Byron from now on. So let's go across to him so he can say hello. <laughs> uh, thank you Tristan <laughs> and what a lovely start we found one of our huge pachyderms we see here in the Sabi Sands or in the Greater Kruger a lovely elephant now there's actually a few of them around what a lovely start I really enjoy elephant it's always great to see them good afternoon my name is Byron and on camera with me this afternoon is Sebastian so what a lovely start for us we we'll find a herd of elephant there's um, there's one over there just off to our left and then um, we might be able what I'm going to do is I'll drive around shortly I'll go to the other side of the dam where there's uh, the rest of the herd they're actually just off into the distance you might see a few of them moving around there but we'll get a we'll get a bit closer. It's a lovely, cool, overcast afternoon. Um, it's been a great overcast, cool day. In fact, look at that. You can see. So, might have quite a bit of activity from the animals. Hopefully, real 
bed weather, I always say. <laughs> hey Sebastian, it is. You want to be snuggled in bed. Oh, don't tell anybody I use the word snuggled. <laughs> uh, it's a, this looks like a, a nice youngish bull by the looks of things. That is off to our left. Um, no, no, he's not that young actually. It's not that young. I would probably put him in his mid to late twenties, I would say. And uh, it's exciting that Tristan has got to see all four big males together, the Birmingham males at Coalition. Um, I can't remember if I've seen all four of them together, now that I think about it. Uh, so apparently Tristan says, uh, sorry, I thought he had a view of them earlier, but um, um, they are apparently around that carcass somewhere. So hopefully we'll get a view of all of them later. And then I'm also still continuing my bird challenge. There we go. Sebastian, there is a fork-tailed drongo and we don't have one yet. Finally. <laughs> Just off to the left. Um, okay. Through there on that branch, you might see it. Let's see if we can get him quickly. A little bit to the right. There he is. There we go. That is a fork tailed drongo sitting over there. Ah, really? Okay, so that takes me up to 48. Now, for those of you who are wondering what I'm going on about, my, I asked the viewers just to challenge me over the next two weeks while I'm here. Um, any challenge really what I should should do or shouldn't do <laughs> but um, one of the challenges that came through was see how many birds I can find on camera obviously um, in well the idea is try and get up to a hundred but being winter and also trying to get the birds on camera is very difficult but we, we will try our best so I'm on 48 at the moment uh, have a look on that elephant. Do you see how he dusted the grass off before he fed on it? Um, it's amazing to watch the elephants do that. They, they're very intelligent. They'll smack the grass around a little bit, dust off all the dust or, or ground that is on the, on the grass, and then they'll feed on it. Alright, let's go around and see if I can get a view of the rest of the herd. While I do that, let's head back to Big Boss Man Tristan, who is very excited about going on leave tomorrow, and he's leaving me here all on my own. I know, Byron, but don't worry. I'm sure somebody will be out there to snuggle with you in this cooler weather. Yes, we did hear that you said the word snuggle, and we'll not let that rest for some time. But you can see now a second of the Birmingham boys has joined. So Nena has now walked in, and he's standing over. So he's pushed that female from where she was feeding. She's now been resigned to eating off the face, and he's licking around the eyes and the ears and all of that area. <laughs> she doesn't look too impressed by it. She had been working so hard to detach the one leg from the carcass and she'd gotten almost all the way through and she was breaking the hip joints when Nena came walking in. Insuko in the distance is not too phased by Nena now approaching. The other two are still quite some way away. They're closer towards the quarantine open area so they're not going to be here just yet I don't think but maybe with the sound of feeding we might see them coming in as well but Nena looks absolutely magnificent. He's dark and he's full and, and healthy from that buffalo kill that he had yesterday and they must be just so happy to have two buffalo in two days. Must be a wonderful thing after having so few buffalo over the last few months. But you can see, look at his mane, it's starting to get darker and darker. Now remember Nena when he used to be very blonde and now you can see there's this dark black patches coming through all over the place and he is looking wonderful and look at that face so the reason why we know it's Nena is if you look on his nose there you can see two lines that run over his nose in an equal sign that is the most characteristic sort of scarring that he's got oh, big teeth as well so that's the easiest way to recognize him I also find that he's probably one of the better looking of the four Birmingham's not to say that any of the others are ugly lions but I just there's something about Nene I like the way that his mane stands so tall you can see he almost gets like a mohawk on top of his head well not a mohawk but a 
maybe a perm is probably better a very tall mane on Nena and it's, it's really is a beautiful color it's a kind of got this ginger and black mixed in and I find him photographically and visually very appealing Outback, you're wondering how bad this buffalo is starting to smell. Well, the answer to that outback is that I haven't even smelt it yet. As the wind is drifting away from me. We strategically parked ourselves so that the wind would blow over our shoulder. But I wouldn't imagine it's too bad. I mean, it will smell, but it's not going to be too hectic because it's actually quite cold today. So we've had overcast weather. There's no sun that's out at the moment. So you'll find that it's cool. It's it's. There's been little sort of sun baking it in any way. Last night was quite a cold night. And that means that this would actually be somewhat still fairly fresh. It's it's not too bad, but I would imagine if we parked on the other side, there would definitely be some sort of scent emanating from that buffalo. Had it been a hot day, it probably would have been a lot more unbearable. You can actually see though, which is very interesting, is generally on um, when you have a buffalo kill and you have a situation where it's stood for two days like this one has. If you go zoom into the meat, you should actually see little bits of maggot activity but there is no maggot activity there whatsoever so there's a few flies and that's because it's actually not very hot at all. Now no, are you full buddy? Have you got no space for more buffalo? Look at him though. Is he not wonderful? Lisa you wondering of the four lions do we know who the alpha lion is? Lisa difficult to say we have spent so little time with the Birmingham's all four together look she's not interested he wants to see if she's a possible mating option. But Lisa, of the four lions, we haven't seen very much of them together. So it's difficult to have seen what the pecking order is. And because they cover such a large expanse and so many prides, all four males are seen with the different prides at different times. So it's it's a difficult one to work out who is actually in charge of what's going on. It's not like the Medjingalan coalition where they used to spend so much time together and you used to be able to see who would lead in, who would lead the charges if they fought or who would be the first one to be mating. In this case with the Birminghams, it's almost like they spend so much time apart that it's really not easy to know actually who's on top of who but I would imagine that Nena and Insuku being that they they physically seem to me a bit larger they've also taken on a much darker tone than what Tinyo and Mfumo have taken on you can see Nena's skin next to the lioness he's almost got like a gray black color to his coat you see that and that's from him becoming one of the more dominant ones within the coalition he's secreting a lot of testosterone which is causing a melanin production and that's what's darkening that fur up so i would imagine one of these two is kind of in control mostly and then you'll find that probably tinyo and mfumo are the last two but it's difficult to say i mean that could be completely wrong and you'll find even with these coalitions is that there'll be an ebb and flow of dominance so now with Nsuku maybe carrying a bit of an injury in nena or Fumo or Tinyo might be able to then pass him and become more dominant and try and get into mating um, before this male is able to because of his injury. So it's difficult to say, but you can see how he's sniffing around. Not very happy lioness to have him sniffing around. She's obviously not in the mood for mating given that she's. <laughs> this is not going to be the end of that fight. I love Insuku's reaction in the background. As you can see, there wasn't one. <laughs> so even though there was a bit of a spat, Insuku is not really interested at all. But you can hear this lioness is not happy. So she's saying, you will not go anywhere near me. I am not in the mood for mating. I'm here to eat. And you might find with the pressure of these four males all around this carcass that she actually decides that enough is enough. And she moves off again. So we'll see how it plays out. Are you grumpy boy? Don't worry, Byron will sympathize with you. He gets that a lot from the ladies. <laughs> that sound though is absolutely incredible when they growl at each other like that. It is the most intense sound. It cuts right through you and you may it makes you feel little. It, I would imagine in back in the day when people used to traverse these areas in ox wagons how these kind of sounds at night must have just put people on edge every time it's it's a crazy sound and I'm glad that we weren't in those times when you had to do all of those things because it must have been a very very tough experience and you can see in the top there there's a few vultures hanging around as well 
so at the moment I've only seen white backs and hooded vultures there are lots of vultures spread around all around us at the moment and these guys are just sitting waiting their turn so they know that the lions are still here there's still lots of food for these vultures and if the lions move off they can flock down and come and grab so instead of wasting energy and flying and, and consuming the energy that they've got in cold weather like this much better for them to sit at a carcass and just wait and hope for the best now we're going to see if our spat continues but while we do that let's go back to mr snuggles himself and see what he's doing with his elephants and whether or not he's managed to get a better visual <laughs> and we've got uh, the rest of the herd um, and this um, apparently well we've seen that uh, elephant with the short trunk and I know it's been referred to as the short trunk herd um, she is around that female but look at watch this young one suckling over here it's always wonderful to see that and a starling in view that's a Cape glossy starling we have seen that that is on the list Tristan sounds very chirpy today. He, he definitely got to rest this morning, you can see. <laughs> what a great start to the afternoon though. I always enjoy it when we do find something very early on in the show. Um, so that there's always something to talk about and well there is always something to talk about let's be honest but it's always nice to see something that uh, that uh, we wanted to see like elephant I always want to see elephant and I know Tristan was really excited to see those lions I hope all of you are having a wonderful weekend so far. And don't forget everyone, I'm sure Tristan told you, but send us your questions and comments. Hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Always enjoy hearing from everyone. Having questions. Oh, hang on, here comes the elephant we spoke about earlier. Just off to, our, to my left. It's the female with the short trunk. I'm not exactly sure what happened to this trunk. But you can see, not a, not a full trunk. Wow. I can hear that bull that we saw earlier breaking some trees behind us. I think he's trying to feed on some branches and some bark. Sherry. I couldn't agree with you more. You said the elephants are just so absolutely beautiful, and they are. And that's why I, I just, I really, really enjoy watching them and spending time with them. I find them, I do find them very peaceful creatures, despite their size. And I know some people, some people get a, a, a little bit nervous around elephant and that and that's understandable you do always have to have respect for them but they are very peaceful they're very intelligent oh joe you were wondering what i enjoy about elephant well that those two things peaceful and intelligent caring they're very caring towards one another always looking out for each other but i really i i, I don't know how to explain it I, I've got a wonderful um, affinity to elephants. Let me move forward a little bit for us, here, Seb. I love this weather, though. It's such a nice change. It's, um, it's really, really enjoyable. Sorry. I'll switch off here. I love that swagger that they get when they do walk down a hill. And um, that elephant did a little bit of it. Just walk, when they walk quickly, they get this little swagger. 
and it's almost like me at the moment, Seb, with my my <laughs> sore back swagger that I've got. <laughs> and is better. It's getting better though. I suppose I'm just looking for attention. <laughs> they don't make game rangers as tough as they used to, clearly. <laughs> Tristan calling me broke back Byron. That's not fair, Tristan. That <laughs> I gave Tristan that nickname to use, so you can't claim it. But uh, <laughs> it was quite funny. <laughs> Now, I'm going to, I'm going to move um, from this area. We're going to head up towards Buffelshook Dam because I think the Unkahuma Pride were around there this morning. So we might go and have a look, see if we can find them. That would be great. Um, and we'll see what else we can find along the way. But let's head back to Tristan, who's got the vultures in the trees. Um, and he's still enjoying that lion sighting very much. I am, Byron. I'm loving the lion sighting. You can see another eye in the sky making its way around and circling, and it will land somewhere close by. I'm sure there's a tree that it's about to go and pull the landing gear up on. And there we go. So another one that's arrived. You can see some of its friends right out in the distance there. There's lots and lots of vultures spread out everywhere. So those are all white backs that you can see there and then there's a few hooded vultures that are starting to get a little cheeky that are coming up behind the vehicle and they're going to get a nasty surprise if they go too close. So there's some more of the white backs all spread out and there's the hooded's that are down on the ground at the moment. These guys are the cheeky of the vultures. You'll find that they'll come down and they'll always just sort of skirt the carcass and the lines themselves and they hop about looking for any bits of the carcass that might have been dragged off slightly that they can feed on while the lions are busy with the main part of the carcass so it's not uncommon to see hooded vultures down like this being very brave but if you look at them they have a very different structure to most of the other vultures that we see out here they are a lot smaller birds much smaller shorter neck and then you see that they've got that very narrow elongated beak now the other vultures have big thick heavy bills and that's because most of the other vultures we get here are designed to get into the carcass while there's still a lot of meat on it so they'll take big chunks off and open the tough hides of these animals whereas these guys are designed to be the last ones the cleanup crew so to speak they'll come in and they will pick these bones absolutely clean and if we remember the carcass that the Nkuma pride had about two weeks ago when Tara was still here that carcass was absolutely bone so we're picked clean 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 and it would have been these guys that would have done it they're almost surgical in their approach those tiny beaks are able to get into all the nooks and crannies and they can feed off every little bit of nutrients and what they leave in any of the the parts that they can't get to you'll find then we'll get carnivorous beetles and grubs that will be inside and they'll clean up all of the rest so carrion beetles and things like that that will go in there and get the rest of it so there'll be nothing that will go to waste from this buffalo but i am hugely surprised at how little of this buffalo has actually been eaten in the last few well in the last 24 hours it's also a nice picture there of the adult on the right hand side with the pink face and then a juvenile on the left with the sort of gray brown face there goes the adult i love how these guys walk around they almost look a bit comical don't they oh, little scratch on the face They do also have the most intriguing eyes. They've got this black eye with a white circle around it. I find their eyes really quite pretty for a vulture, given that they're not pretty birds. But they've got a beautiful eye that has that white ring around it. The other vultures don't quite get that, and then you've got that little pink hue. You'll also see with them that they've got a lot more feathering on the head than what the other vultures do. And that feathering is because when they get put their heads in carcasses, generally there's not nearly as much blood and, and, and meat that is around that's going to make the feathers get all full of not rubbish. Whereas the white backs and the leopard faced and the, the white headed, they have more bare skin on the head because they're still putting their heads in when there's a lot of gore that's inside there that can get on the feathers and make them full of blood and, and really not very pleasant at all. You can see beautiful colors on that one. And I always look at hooded vultures because they have different markings, all of them. So Lisa, you say it's the same color pink as our owl's eyelids. Well, it is actually, isn't it? They both are sporting pink, maybe pink's in this time of year. No, I'm joking. With birds, it's quite a common color to see where they don't have feathers. They often do have very pink skin in comparison to some of the other animals out here. 
can see look how they just pick up little scraps here and there it's amazing to watch these guys and like I say they are probably the bravest of the vultures you'll find they'll go very close to the lions but if they edge too close they're gonna have a problem now I see Nenna's up and looks as though he's going to start tucking into the buffalo again now he's just gotten up for the first time since he had his little spat with the female she, he's now moving towards the carcass and hopefully he's actually going to start feeding he looks as though he's a little unsure at the moment oh bless you but isn't he beautiful oh no you can't pee on your food well sometimes the the men just don't have table manners and you can see he's urinating in the background there right on his buffalo basically lovely now somebody else has to lie in that and eat that it's not very pleasant not that anybody seems to care the female and the and in suku behind him are not worried at all but maybe he's all his food is pushing on his bladder and well he can't wait and can't move off anywhere else might as well just go right near your food i suppose the food itself is not exactly that clean either so not too bad but look at those eyes see how he's watching the vultures as they come in Christine, you're wondering why the rest of the Nkuma pride is not feeding here as well? Christine, the answer is, I have no idea what the answer is to that. Um, the Nkuma pride had to have heard this buffalo go down. They had to have been a part of that process because it was their tracks that came here. The male's tracks only um, in Suku came down with the pride and, and he was in this area. So I have no idea. The only thing that I can surmise is that they carried on hunting and they killed something else. And so they ate that and then realized that the boys were around and just left it to them. And this younger female was still with the males at the time, or the male. And so she just ended up staying here. And it's much closer proximity to her cubs. So it's a good place for her to be, to be able to go back and forth for the cubs. But it is interesting. I would have thought last night that they might have made their way here. So I don't actually know why they didn't. Maybe just too much competition with the four big boys here. It really is not going to get a look in. As you saw with that female when she started feeding, she got immediately pushed away. But that's the hooded vulture that I was saying. You see how close they get to the lions. They really aren't too worried about lions. They'll kind of come around the back. They know that they're quite agile birds and that they can get away from time to time. So they'll edge around and try and see. And the male is just keeping a close eye on it. And if it gets too close, you'll find the male will come charging and push that vulture back up and into the trees itself Kestrel Socks you're wondering if vultures find their kills by vision most certainly they ride thermals and they get up into the skies and they'll get quite high up and then from there they have incredible eyesight that they're able to then pick up scenes like this now a buffalo kill that we see like this is very easy for vultures to find it's completely open there's not even a tree anywhere to be seen and as a vulture comes over it's going to see a whole bunch of lions and a big gray black animal lying down on the on, on the ground and it knows quickly that that's a kill and then they come down and as soon as one or two start dropping the rest from long way away will see those birds coming like these two that are coming you see them sends right in the distance there so these two will start coming in and others will see those two coming from a far 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 away and they'll slowly but surely follow those in there you go you see them there circling and what will happen is that circling motion they'll eventually circle their way down to here and so others see that motion and they then come in now I've spent a lot of time in the reserves and often come across people particularly in the Kruger Park when they're driving themselves and they see vultures flying in the sky and they always think there's a carcass there because they're seeing vultures that's not necessarily true sometimes vultures will congregate for water and they will circle like this but the trick is if you ever want to know if there's food is watch the vultures do they gain height if they gain height then you know that there is no carcass that they're just going up in foraging motion but if they start to lose height and they start to come down and you're not near a riverbed or water big water source then you know that there's something dead there so there's a good tip for anybody that's in the park and sees vultures but you can see those two are effortlessly soaring there's no wing flaps at all that's all just thermals that they're riding it's amazing to watch these big birds in flight always love doing it so hopefully those two will drift closer to us in fact they are drifting closer turn by turn so while we watch them and see their approach into this area let's go back to Byron I think he's left his elephants and is on his way to Biffleswick Dam oh dear I am indeed <laughs> now we've got birds again that we need to try get on camera Seb let's try this one behind us quickly 
because this is a nice bird um, and I think I saw it perched nicely in the tree um, you know what there it is if you follow the main stem that goes up kind of just keep following that it's on the right hand side of the tree so actually a little bit further right a little bit further right and up there we go and center the screen should see it up a little bit right a little bit oh, yeah. there we go yeah. look at that it's a brew brew that is hiding in there I saw it moving earlier there it is it's a brew brew <laughs> we haven't uh... um... Just hang on, actually, now that I'm looking at it, you know what, it, no, it is not a boo-boo, I apologize, it is a black back puff back, sorry, black back puff back, I just, um, I just caught a glimpse of the back when it moved through that, uh, that little tree, so Meg's just changed it, sorry, it's a black backed puff back, and that's a nice little bird to add to the list. Tricky to sometimes get these birds on camera, um, especially when they are. We get glimpses of them, and then now the two other little birds just off to the left, Seb, at the base of that tree. Um, there we go. Water thickenies. There they are. They're hiding in there. We haven't got those yet. You can see how well camouflaged they are, though. So I heard them calling a bit earlier. Yes. Halfway there, it looks like. 50 birds. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. 50. Yeah. The next 50 is going to be harder. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's great. Blackback puffback and water thickney. That's awesome. <coughs> Sure, it's difficult to spot these little birds in the trees and try to get them on camera as Sebastian knows better than anyone. We're not doing too badly at all. I'm, I'm always... Yeah, about three days, I think. Yeah. I'm, I'm always impressed at the cameraman and how, how quickly they can zoom and find the animals um, just by looking through a little LCD screen. It's not easy. Right, um, yeah, so as I said, we we're going to make our way towards Biffelzook Dam. Just came past Treehouse Dam, sorry, Twin Dams, just to have a look if there's anything around here. Now, Tristan had that amazing sighting of the giant eagle owl yesterday. Uh, we did get to see, um, we did get to see it uh, yesterday morning, but he found it in the afternoon. And it had a, um, had a, a kill, which was interesting to see. I'm not sure what it was feeding on. I think it was in here somewhere that it yeah. was, yeah, it was, eh? yeah. Uh, just such an amazing bird. Giant eagle owl. I wouldn't be surprised if it's just sitting in one of these other jackal berries. Uh, Lady Lone Wolf, you asked, what is my favorite thing about birds? Well, uh, Lady Lone Wolf, I just, um, I, I enjoy birding. I enjoy trying to identify the birds. Um, you know, you, you do get, obviously, you get a bit better at it. There's some Crested Franklins just crossing the road. We have got those on the list. Um, you do get better the more experience you have and the more time you spend in the bush. But you still, I mean, I mean even, even myself, I still find myself... Uh, making the odd little mistake, not not checking very carefully. But the thing is, especially with birding, is you look with people and you try identify a bird together, um, and it's just, it's fun. But the calls, I love the calls. Love seeing the different colours, different displays. Those that do display. So there's a lot, there's there's a lot of interesting things about birds. So and I think that's what makes birding so much fun. Uh, 
what have we got here? We've got them on camera. The white crested helmet trikes are oh, they all all just flew off there. So very quick. But we have seen them already, white crested helmet trikes. What does that little guy? That looked like a little shagro, but far too quick for us. Dalrez, you asked if we use calls to attract the birds. No, we don't. Well, I certainly don't. Um, I'll play the calls um, for the viewers to hear what I'm talking about. But I don't go around playing calls to attract the birds. The, the, the theory is that it's... It, well, they say it's unethical because you, um, you disturb the birds and they think there's potentially another bird, a threat, nearby. Oh, these little, these little shagras are so quick. No, they've flown through to the back. Sebia, look like little brown crown shagras. We're going to try hard. We're going to have to try hard for them. We've got well, two species of shagras we'll see here. The brown crowned and the black crowned shagra. But they dart from tree to tree very, very quickly. It's not easy to see them. So as I was saying, just the playing calls and that, some birders will do it, and I don't think there's that much of a problem with it, to be honest. Um, but some birds that are quite territorial, they, they do, I think they do get a little um, tense or stressed, because they think there is a bird in the area that, um, that is another threat, potentially. Hold on, Seb's just spotted something. Uh, through there. Uh, what was that? So, let's see. Hold on a second. Sorry, I just want to see what this was. Um, it's so. Maybe it was a dike. Uh, it looked like it was bounding okay. through the grass there. Let, let's just quickly have a, a look here. Stick with us for a second. Just want to make sure. Um, it, May, Seb seems to think it was possibly a dake, uh, I mean a, a jackal. Let's just have a look. It looked like it was bounding through the grass like a dake, but let's just see. It's a bit thick there at the moment. Um, just want to make sure. Oh, Seb, I don't see anything there at the moment. I don't see it I think it was a daker and it would make sense, a typical daker behavior to disappear very quickly, bound through the grass and run off. Um, anyway, let's carry on up to Biffles Hook Dam. Let's go back to the man with the plan, Tristan, and see how his lions are doing. Well, Byron, my plan is really just to sit here. It's a very simple plan today. I find simple plans work better. And maybe your plan to head to Biffles Hook will also be a good one too. But our lions are doing exactly what they've been doing pretty much this afternoon. Is Nena sleeping and Mfumo and Tinio behind us also still sleeping. I might take a little turn past them just now to see what they're up to. Although I don't think there's re really too much going on just yet. I'm sure they'll meander up this way as the afternoon wears on. And Nena is still tucking in to his buffalo. So he's going head deep into there. Now you'll soon find that he'll start pushing his head right in. And it might be quite interesting just to see whether or not they start opening up the stomach side and trying to actually get in from that area because the way that they're feeding now it's going to be quite tough for him to get any further he's got obviously got quite a large head and, and mane and they don't want to get it full of blood and all kinds of other things so you'll find once they can't reach any further then they go around to the front and they'll open out that stomach cavity and get into it from there it's not a exactly big buffalo, it's a small female buffalo that they're feeding on, so I'm surprised that they haven't eaten more. Arabian Desert, you're wondering what the maximum age is for a lion. Well, Arabian Desert depends whether you're talking male or female and whether you're talking wild or captive. 
So wild lions won't live as much as captive lions or zoo lions because they don't get fed as much. They also have to fight for territories and hunt and varying other things that makes life very difficult. So it's not easy for, for lions and, and it's a hard life. So with males, you'll find that they generally live between sort of 12 and 14 years. Sometimes you will get male lions that will get a little bit older. I know there was a male lion in a game reserve called Pilansberg in South Africa. That at one stage he was over 18, so which is very, very old for a male line it's not something you'll see every day in fact I think he eventually died at just over 19 years old I'll have to check that but that's ancient for a line the Kruger lines very seldom get anywhere past 15 16 years so that's males then females generally will live from about 14 to 18 with the sometimes you'll get a female that will go over 20 but that is very very seldom oh it's a bit of vulture commotion in the distance fighting in the background there which is what happens as things get a bit packed on the dead trees there's only so much space and then they start fighting with one another and you'll find they jump and claw and peck it it's, it's quite something to watch vultures particularly if they come down onto the carcass then it gets quite crazy um, so that's typically what the lions live to in the wild um, in captivity you'll find that males can it can probably get close to 20 and females maybe a little bit older 21 22 years old but it's in the wild almost unheard of for a lion to go over 20 years now you can see he's starting to groom himself so I think he's going to have had his full and I wouldn't be surprised he gets up and moves if he gets up and moves I would expect this female maybe to wake up and start coming back to the carcass and carrying on feeding but you can see how she knows as soon as he's around that she needs to back off and she then goes and lies close by but her breathing is still very rapid lots and lots of tum uh, food in that tummy so it means that she has to breathe fast to try and digest it it's pushing up on her lung capacity and it means that her breaths are much shorter so luckily for them it's not a hot day otherwise these guys would be not impressed with life at all I'm sure they would be down in some shade somewhere and Ruth you wondering if lions ever get sick from overeating I can tell you that I've never seen a lion get sick from overeating I've seen them regurgitate parts of the carcass that they're not digesting properly so like sometimes if they eat a big sinewy piece I've seen a lioness regurgitate that also as lions get older there was a lion in this area from the Styx Pride known as Goggy and she was an old lioness and her teeth were almost like little pebbles in her mouth they were no longer even sharp and she used to try and eat and sometimes she would swallow big pieces of the skin because she actually couldn't get through it and then she would regurgitate that skin out because it would be just too big and, and too too thick and I don't think it actually she could swallow it properly so she used to go like halfway down and then she would get sick but I've never seen a lion get sick from overeating a healthy lion like these that are in their primes this female is still very young and the males themselves only just come into their best years male lions generally have their best years from 7 to 12 and these Birmingham's have just started edging into the seven year old range so they're in the best condition that they're going to be in and it means that they're not going to waste food so very seldom you'll see them getting ill from food they try not to get rid of any of the nutrients that they gain it's a hard life out here and so even though the Birmingham's have had two buffaloes in two days there could be a situation where you have these guys going without a buffalo for a week and then they'll rue the day that they ate too much and regurgitated it so they try to keep as much in as possible now while I'm watching all of this going on I'm keeping my eye out for the vultures because vultures are coming in by the mass all the time you can see some of them arriving now so these vultures the reason why I'm looking out for them is because there's a very special vulture that's being seen around the Kruger Park area lately just north of us it's called an Egyptian vulture and the Egyptian vulture is very 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 seldom seen now the thing about the Egyptian vulture is it might arrive at a carcass like this you never know these vultures can travel long distances to get here and there's a possibility that big carcass we might see one of those arriving so I'm always just looking in the off chance that it does come they're a bird that you can tell quite easily from flight because it has this big diamond like tail which is very different to all the other birds that we see here most of our vultures have rounded tails so that diamond wedge shaped tail is very different from the rest it looks a lot like that immature hooded that we saw earlier with a gray face skin as a young one because this particular Egyptian vulture is still an immature it's not a it's not a fully grown adult when they're adults they actually get a white plumage and they're quite beautiful vultures and I'll try and find a picture for you in my book quickly they do have them 
I do have my book handy, so that will be easy. There we go. All right, Senzo, let's put this on the dashboard so that we can go through it. Now, this is the vulture that we're in question. It's this guy in the middle here. And I was saying that this is the bird that's been currently seen, is this juvenile dark with that very similar grayish skin on the face. And you can see it looks quite similar to the hooded vulture in a lot of respects. But when it becomes an adult, it's completely unmistakable. You can't mistake this bird for anything else when it becomes an adult. It turns this white color. None of our other vultures look anything like that. And it has that bright yellow face. And you can see the tail that I was talking about on this juvenile. You see how diamond and wedged it is and at the back as opposed to the other vultures that we see here which I'll show you now. I'm going to turn the page quickly so excuse me. But here's the hooded vulture which is the one that it looks like. You can see their tail. This one down at the bottom here, Senzo. This one, yeah. So you can see the tail on this hooded vulture. It does have a slight little point to it, but it's very, very sort of rounded in comparison to that Egyptian vulture. So wouldn't it be nice if that arrived? That would be a massive bird. Chrissy, you want to know what the difference is between a vulture and a buzzard? Well, Chrissy, um, buzzards are much smaller birds than vultures. So vultures are in their own separate league size is one thing also the way that they are designed buzzards tend to have very long legs and they don't have bare featherless heads like what you see on the um, vultures here our vultures most of them have featherless heads and that's because they feed a lot of rotting carcasses now buzzards might be seen on roadkill and those kind of things but that's just opportunistic it's much like what you see with a battalier eagle or a tawny eagle they'll come down to dead animals but they're still covered with feathers because they don't exclusively feed on carcasses and it's the same thing with buzzards so buzzards are much smaller than what you'll see with vultures and vultures will have unique features like the featherless heads and varying other things to do with flying very high because they fly much higher than the buzzards do right now talking about opportunistic there's one man out here that's always opportunistic whenever something is around particularly food related he's on to it let's go across to him and see where he is and what he's been up to <laughs> food related <laughs> Well, we're actually very happy because um, we got uh, we got our food delivery today, so we are very excited. Both Tristan and I had big smiles on our faces. Um, now I just need to get hold of Tristan quickly. I need to ask him something, but there are other guys on the radio, unfortunately. Let's just see if I can get hold of him. Sorry, now these other guys are talking. I'll try to get hold of Tristan shortly. I'm sure Meg has already, has already told Tristan that I need to speak to him. Um, yeah, Meg's, Meg's just asked Tristan if, if he can get hold of Ralph on the, I think the Eastern Channel. Apparently there's an update of a leopard, but I can't, for some reason our radio is not working. So just uh, find out, I think it's at Chitwa Chitwa Dam, and I'll head straight down there, but just find out where it is exactly and if I can go there. Sounds like there is a, a leopard down at Chitwa Chitwa Dam, as I say, said, but um, I can't get a hold of anybody. I can't get a hold of anybody just yet. Um, he's in that area, I think we might just go down there. If we don't have luck, we can always come back and try the Nkuhuma Pride, but it would be great to see a leopard this afternoon. So I'm going to head, head down there first. Our plan was to go there a little bit later, but I think let me go there first and see, maybe. Alright, great. So, it's, so it sounds like there is a leopard on the dam wall at Chitra. Let's see if... Um, I can uh, maybe get into a sighting there, that would be great. Alright, now, um, well, let's head, while I go, uh, go there, I'm going to try and get down there quite quickly. Let's, uh, let's head back to Tristan. Um, who is very envious of the lions apparently because they've had a whole buffalo to feed on. Well, Byron, I'm not envious because today, after panic and grief-stricken moments during this week where our food delivery for this area, for the camp didn't arrive, 
we had a delivery today. So Byron was saying today if they didn't arrive that he was going to commit some grievous bodily harm to whoever the guy was that was supposed to be bringing it but all is calm and settled we have food in camp so there's no need to be jealous of a rotting stinking buffalo because we got Amanda instead and she makes very delicious food so we don't have to worry anymore but it was getting a bit bit of a, a scary moment there we had very little food and when Byron doesn't have enough food well then we know things get a little bit tense so I'm glad we found food and we're so glad that uh, it arrived before it got too desperate and Byron ended up maybe eating somebody else or <laughs> no not that he would I'm just joking you can see Nana though is stuffed he's eaten his way through it he found something that he ate that I don't think he liked the taste of because he had the funniest face as he was eating it. it's almost like when you're a kid and your parents are forcing you to eat something that you don't like like vegetables or something like that and you're trying to put it down because you're getting told you're not going to have dessert if you don't eat it and <laughs> this guy had the same face he was kind of putting it down but he really didn't seem as though he enjoyed it at all so I wonder what that was that he managed to gobble we couldn't see nicely but the face was priceless now Brokeback Byron at the moment has a, a little bit of a problem with counting so I just need to help him out quickly because he's wondering as to how he uses the numbers on the radio. Well Byron it's quite simple, channel 1 is here via teller, channel 2 is the channel that you're looking for to try and find your spotted cat down on Chitwa so if you go onto channel 2 that's what you're looking for and channel 5 Byron is for the western side so there you go we've given Byron a little bit of a maths lesson as well as a radio lesson. Oh, there we go. You see he's eating a bit of the intestine. So for those of you that are squeamish, it might be a good time to turn away now because I think he's getting some of the stomach and, and the intestines now and that's maybe why he's pulling that face. It's <laughs> not a job I would want to do, that's for sure. But, well, if you want to stay king out here and you want to be big and powerful, I suppose that's what you've got to do. You've got to get all those nutritious organs inside there. But you can imagine what that must smell like, putting your muzzle in there. Oof, I can't. Hello oh, Denise, you want to know what the names are of all the Birmingham boys? Well, let's start from the boy at the back who's in a state of recline. He looks like my dad on a Saturday afternoon when watching the rugby. He's passed out and kind of taking it easy before the rugby starts uh, with, <laughs> with a rounded belly. Now, no shame, he's going to probably kick me for that, so <laughs> let's not go down that road. But that over there is um, Insuku, so Insuku means gold, um, and he was given that name because he had the big blonde mane when he first arrived, so it's him over there. Then in front here we've got Nena, he's got the equal sign on his nose as we were talking about just now, and then I'm hoping that Tinyo and Mfumo, which are the other two, arrive. Now Tinyo means tooth, and it's a broken left canine that he's got, his lips sit slightly funny, so he's quite easy to identify. You can see the buffalo leg moving all over the place, it looks quite weird because it almost looks like the buffalo is alive, it's not, I can tell you that this buffalo has been well and truly dead for two days, but he's just getting into that leg. And then Mfumo, which is the last one, is authority. It means the authority, which is, I think, Brent's favorite name for the Birmingham boys. He loves the name Mfumo. And so he's also around. And then I didn't say what Nena means, but Nena means warrior. So those are the names for all of the four Birmingham boys. And they were given the names by James and Brent and Jamie, and they all sat down and they went through it and they got the proper names for this area, the language that is spoken in this area. So that's the naming of the Birmingham boys. And there used to be a fifth one. Unfortunately, he's he died um, two years ago now, I would imagine. Yeah, it's almost two years ago. Um, he died from a buffalo wound to the chest. So, yeah, unfortunately for him. It would have been nice to have the five of them. It would have been interesting to see the dynamic if there was a fifth one because at the moment there's enough females that the four of them kind of don't really compete too much with one another. There's the Torchwoods and now, in fact, they've got four prides. But I wonder if the fifth one would have caused a little bit more of a stir amongst these boys and would have actually united them a bit more in some places. It's interesting, sometimes you get a certain member that likes to spend time with others and that keeps them together and when that disappears you see a little bit more of a breakup. But we'll see, we'll see how it goes with these four. I think they're going to have to be careful at some point. They've been largely untested even in their sort of takeover of this area. Yes, they had to chase out two big male lines in the form of the Matimbas, but a numbers game five on two, it was never going to work for the Matimbas. And, and so since then, they've had nobody come in here and try and chase oh no yes that's the stomach lining that he's getting into now so we're getting into the nitty-gritty stuff at this stage and 
you can see there's bits of rumen and all kinds of things and like I say if you're a bit squeamish this is probably not the best thing so we're going to go away from this to the baby face Byron and see if he's managed to figure out his maths and work out the radio numbers and see where he is <laughs> baby face Byron Tristan really I don't think so, but thank you. <laughs> um, now, I'm on Chitwa Chitwa. I've just got on Chitwa Chitwa, not too far from the dam. Um, I, unfortunately, these radios, um, this radio's not working out at all. It's just static. I can't get hold of anyone. I'm going to see if I, if I stop, maybe, if I can try and get hold of... No, I've got... Ralph, Ralph for Byron. It's good afternoon, number four. Um, confirm how many vehicles in your sighting at Chitra Chitra Dam, please. Let's see, may Um, okay, copy. Sorry, Ralph. Uh, radio is very bad. I can't copy you. Um, confirm one there, one making their way. Okay, copy. If you can just let me know um, if there is space to move in there, that'll be great. Yes, please, Ralph. Thank you very much. Alright, well, at least he'll call me on the other channel if there is. I think what's happened is, everyone, there's... So what's happened, everyone, is that um, it sounds like this leopard is... Um, it sounds like a young male, so I'm wondering if it's not her son. I know he has been um, hanging around Chitra Chitra Dam quite a bit. Um, but I think what's, what's happened is he's in a position, there's only space for two vehicles because he's on the damn wall apparently, which is fine. Um, so we'll, we'll let um, everyone else have a view first um, and once they, they move on they'll let us know and we'll hopefully get a view of that leopard later, but that'll be amazing. The great thing is we can still drive around here and have a look for other animals in the meantime. I was wondering when we were going to see a leopard again. I haven't seen a leopard for ages. So I'm hoping he hangs around and doesn't move off. But even if he does, we'll try to follow him. Yeah, Gary, you asked if we get Cory Bustards in the Sabi Sands. I have indeed seen Cory Bustards here, Gary, yes. Um, down in the south, between Singita and Londolozi, there's very open clearings and that, and I've seen Cory Bustards down there. For those of you who are thinking, what did Byron just say? <laughs> now, a Cory Bustard is, um, is the heaviest flying bird. Um, let, me, let me just find it for you. Beautiful bird, very big. There we go, and you can see the name there too. Cory Bustard. Very beautiful bird, very large bird. Um, and we do get them, I have seen in the Sabi Sands, I have seen them here before. But they do prefer, they do prefer kind of uh, drier areas. Um, I've seen a lot in the Kalahari, you see plenty of them. It's always nice to see those big, uh, big quarry bustards. Need to try to find some more birds, I think, hey, Seb? Arabian Desert, you asked why we don't see kite birds in Africa. No, we do. We definitely do. Um, we get black-shouldered kites. We get yellow-billed kites. Um, we, we get a number of kites, in fact. I'm just trying to think. Um, 
yellow billed kite I think I have seen up here I'm just trying to think what we get in this area I'll show you quickly what some of those kite birds look like um, um, I saw a lot of black shouldered kites this is the beautiful black shouldered kite which we do get all over and every now and I, I can't remember when last I saw one in the Sabi sands but you do get them around they do occur here beautiful black shouldered kite and I saw saw this bird uh, what was it uh, um, last weekend when was I yeah last weekend I was in the mountains near Clarence a part of South Africa in the free state and saw a lot of these birds flying around um, and then we also get there's the yellow billed kite there we go yellow billed kite now this this migrates so um, it should uh, it should get back your oh, they intra-African breeding migrants um, and if you see here I'll say they should arrive July August so yeah we might we might see some of them around they do occur in this area and that is the yellow billed kite I have seen them around here before so we do indeed get kites uh, we'll just have to you'll just have to keep watching hopefully we'll get to show you some kites all right well let's head back across to big boss man Tristan with these feeding lions and uh, and see if he is getting hungry himself no Byron I'm afraid not given that what he is eating right now would probably put most people or food he's busy ripping out the stomachs as we speak remember buffalo have a four chambered stomach so we're going slowly through them he's already done one you can see the big pile of grass and rumen that's at his feet that came out of the first stomach that he came up that pull, pulled out there it is there you can see a bit of the lining on it so he's slowly but surely going through it and it's really not a very pleasant sight to be honest it's a bit gory so i'm certainly not feeling hungry at all but Nena seems to like it. He seems to think it's rather tasty and he's tucking into it with abandon at this stage. So. But oof. I was just saying to Senzo, imagine having to eat that. Imagine having to eat raw buffalo intestine that's two days old. That can't be pleasant. Take care, you're wondering what the most nutritional organ is of this buffalo. Well, I'd Im imagine that it would be either the liver or the kidneys. One of those two would probably house the most amount of nutrition for these guys. They go after liver, kidney, heart very quickly. So, but liver and, and kidneys, as, as far as I know, are probably the most nutritional for. Big sigh. Is, have you had enough now, boy? Yep. He is a beautiful individual. Now he's going to go to this lioness. Let's see. This might get a little bit explosive once again. They had a bit of a go at each other already once today. So let's see. Maybe it happens again. You can see, look, she's not impressed by his approach at all. Sorry, boy. No, you're unfortunately on your own. I wonder if he's going to lie down right here next to us. But look at those eyes. He is magnificent. Now off he goes. Hopefully he's going to lie down right where we are now. Nope, he's decided he's off on his own mission going to go waddling up to a car to go make friends ah, scent marking so it's quite common for to see them scent marking like this they will do it just to make sure the female knows who it is now Philip you want to know if there's any bachelor groups of lions in the area at the moment Philip um, the only young males that we have moving around currently that could potentially come up this way is the Salala males but they I believe had a bit of a fight the other day and there's really not too many of them around so they're in a situation where there's only two of them they're the third one I don't know where he is at the moment and they've got quite bad injuries so I don't know if 
how they're going to fare. They're also a long way from where we are at the moment. So I don't know if they're going to ever end up this side. But other than them, there's very few young males that are currently in this general vicinity at the moment. It's quite interesting actually because I also don't know what's in Kruger and I don't know what's north of us in the Manuleti but just from following the various Facebook pages and looking around I can't find anything at this stage that tends to suggest there's young males that are in this particular section and that are moving around and are going to pose any threat to the Birminghams just yet but you never know sometimes coalitions come from the Kruger Park side and they shift back into the Sabi Sands from the east there's always a chance that could happen you never know but the interesting one is going to be the Mungen Pride because the Mungens at the moment you can see Nen is just posing for all the guests, the vehicle's right behind him there. So he's just making sure everyone gets a nice shot of him while he looks around. Are you going to lie down there, big boy? Oh, he is a beautiful lion. Um, but the Mangen Pride is going to be an interesting one because the last time I saw them, and I, and I think they're all still alive, there was nine males that were in that pride. So they were still young, they were only sort of eight nine months old but can you imagine if all nine males survive a group of nine would be ridiculous and would make for a lot of trouble that's for sure when it comes to um you know the rest of the coalition's archer I, I doubt though very much that we would see nine male lions stay together though i think in the end of the day you would have a situation where the nine would split because it's just too many males to try and dominate and to try and imagine trying to find that much food the four birminghams as it stands when in fact when they were five they were killing multiple buffalo a week to try and sustain all of them so imagine nine of them they would have to go after giraffe young elephants those kind of things just to keep nine fully grown males together so it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out i hope though that we do see it imagine watching that though imagine seeing big nine big males walking down the road towards you how intimidating that would be i think it would scare me if i had to come across that imagine on foot that would be quite something but for now these guys are the undisputed kings there's no real young males threatening anywhere near this area at the moment the lucky thing for them is that anything that comes from the south has got to go through a coalition of five males so that's going to be a big coalition that's going to have to come through them and anything that comes from the west has got to go through the Majingalan coalition which is not big there's only three of them but they're very experienced and very clever lines so that's not going to happen and then anybody who's got to come from the north has got to go through the sky beds the tundra impies the, the my timbers were around that side as well so there's a number of male lions that are actually protecting these birminghams in a way so it's going to be very tough for other lions to get in here without the birminghams kind of being or knowing that they're coming and, and being able to be a force against them now i'm trying to look at this female sorry i'm a bit distracted while i was answering that but this female i'm trying to see her teats and just see how much or how many suckle marks she's got because you can give us an indication of how many cubs she's got i know it's not a scientific method but sometimes you'll see that when the lioness has let's say three or four cubs she'll find that all four of her teats will be worn and there'll be suckle marks on all four but sometimes if you have only two cubs or three cubs then you'll be able to see that one teat is left quite a bit and there's not too much of a sign of it of them being suckled on so i'm trying to see on her whether or not i can see her teats and see which ones are actually being used it looks like her back two are far have far less fur than the front two which means that it's probably only two of them but there we go Lillian who's three years old hello Lillian I hope you're having a wonderful Saturday you want to know if the cubs will come and eat on the buffalo Lillian no the cubs won't come and eat on the buffalo because they're too little so they can't eat buffalo yet their stomach is not able to process the meat so it's not able to use the meat and put the, the nutrients in their body so they can't eat meat at all they have to drink milk so that's what the what they rely on so their mom has to go and take milk to them and they can then drink the milk and that's how they live for the first three months once they reach three months then they're going to start coming to the food and start to try and eat a little bit of meat their teeth also are not developed so it's difficult for them to chew the meat they need to be able to wait until their sharp teeth come out that they can actually cut the meat away from the bone and swallow it so you'll find that it's only going to be only in about probably two months time that we'll see the little cubs coming to carcasses like this and to food like this but for now it's still milk for them You can see she's just looking around, taking it all in. I 
At Medip, you want to know how long the female lions r remain fertile. Well, they come into their first estrus cycles around sort of three, three and a half, sometimes as early as two and a half, but generally around three, three and a half. And then they'll be able to mate all the way through until about 14, 15. The oldest lioness that I've seen with cubs was a 16 year old lioness, but beyond that, I've never seen lions that are older than that actually be able to mate and produce any cubs. Look, she's now going to drag this cock. So I wonder if she wants to maybe just turn it over and expose this other hip. Looks like she's trying. Look at those feet, how big they are when she puts her paw like that and she actually gets those claws out. It is incredible. And the muscles around the shoulder area, huge muscles that are able to help pull these animals down. It must be something amazing. The strength to be able to hold on to these buffalo when they're running away and trying to fight for their life it is an incredible display of power that they're able to do what they do and bring animals like this to the ground but we just got a little shuffling of the vehicle so everybody's kind of moving around trying to wait oh can you see one of our boys has woken up so i think it's in fumo that's down in the distance he's decided to wake up and come out a little bit so we can actually just get a, a small view of him there's a vehicle that's quite close to him but we'll be able to just get a kind of view of him watching now i wonder if anybody can tell me when was the last time we had all four of the birminghams in one sighting so together if anybody knows when we had four birmingham males together hashtag safari live or on the youtube chat when was the last time we had them because i think that it must be close to a year and a half two years since we've seen all of these guys together it's not something that we see very often but that is definitely mfumo that's sitting there you can see also full he's got scars all over his face the easiest way to identify him is from his right side so just now when he was looking in our direction you'll see that he's got a big cut under his right eye there we go so that's the easiest way to identify Mfumo and I find Mfumo has got a lot of character in his face he's got a stare that kind of cuts straight through you it almost looks like he's analyzing the deepest part of you especially when he looks like that isn't that an incredible stare that would make even the strongest feel a little bit weak at the knees and then Tinyo is just the last one we haven't seen he is here but he's just lying under one of the trees trees he's got like I say a very scarred face and a broken tooth and that's why he's easy to identify but I'm glad Mfumo is up it means that he might come feed at the carcass now he's watching this direction so hopefully he's going to come up in, into this area and then Tinyo after him and we'll get all four of them lying together because that would be wonderful if we could it's interesting also we we're talking earlier about how who's dominant within this grouping of lions the fact that Insuku has been feeding here and he's kept the others at bay the whole day so I was asking the guys this morning who fed off this carcass they said not one of the other Birmingham's fed off it they walked from Sydney's dam this morning and they then lay down here and the Nsuku kept growling at them and kind of chasing them off and you've now seen Nena come in and feed but Mfumo and Tinyo are just looking in this direction they're almost as if to say okay when the two big boys are done then we'll come in and take over so it's going to be interesting just to see the dynamics between them if, if they come up into this area and start feeding and whether Nsuku or Nena react to them coming to the carcass I suspect that they won't mind now that they've fed and they're both full and fat but it's interesting that these are the first two to feed ahead of and Mfumo. But how cool is this just to have lions all around you it has been a very long time since we've seen this it's the most special thing when you've got all four of the Birmingham's and I'm hoping beyond all hope that tonight they decide to belt it out and we get a massive roar from all four of them can you imagine sitting amongst that sound and hopefully it'll be while you're all still with us because it'll just be the most epic experience right now i believe byron has pulled up his socks he's tucked in his shirt he's made himself get ready and he's gotten his biceps out and he's managed to find some spots <laughs> no biceps Tristan I'm sorry um, it's too cold to take my jacket off <laughs> but look at this everyone a beautiful young male leopard now um, we we've actually parked a little bit of a distance away from him um, just because he's in quite a tricky um, spot he's actually um, he's at the base of a marula but right up on the edge of a bit of a uh, what would you call that Seba okay. uh, 
<laughs> I don't, don't know. A bit of an eroded section. Look at that. Yeah, see that? But we, luckily, with our camera, we can zoom right in. But we, he's quite away from us. I'm not sure if this is young Hosanna. I think it is. I think it is. Maybe some of you at home can tell me. But I think it is. What a what a lovely, lovely surprise to find a leopard here. Um, yeah. Yeah, everyone's excited apparently, saying what a great cat today. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I suppose it is. I suppose it is. Well, uh, all those lions, and like Tristan says, imagine hearing all four of them roaring. That would be amazing. And you can hear the hippo behind us at the moment. We're just on the other side of Chitra Chitra Dam. The dam wall is right next to me, actually all right behind me. And, um, and this leopard has decided just to lay out in the open. And that is one of the benefits of a cool, cloudy day like this. The chances of seeing predators just lying out in the open on a termite mound or, or anywhere really that's open. A lot higher because it's cooler. So it would make sense. They don't have to lie in the shade. They don't have to stay cool. So this is really, really fantastic. I, I'm so happy um, to see a leopard because I'm just trying to think now. Have I seen a leopard on this since I've been here on this stint? See, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Have you seen a leopard here? On this stint, um, since I've been back. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter, it's always nice to see the tail twitching a little bit. Well, unfortunately, the gremlins are on board with Byron, and we're just making a little turn down towards Mfumo now, see if we can't just spend a bit of time with him while he's chilling out in the road, and the sun has just come out now. Oh, there's Tinio over there. I can finally see him now as well. I was wondering where he was. I'm just going to quickly move around, but look at this glorious sunshine, and this is just going to make things that much better because these lions bathed in golden, beautiful light with these stormy clouds should be a wonderful scene. Alright, here we go. There's beautiful Mfumo. Now I'm just going to get my shadow out of his face, but look at those eyes glowing in that light. There we go. Good afternoon. Still a very sleepy cat. He's not woken up just yet. I thought he might get up and start moving towards the carcass, but I think he's decided it's better just to be sleeping. Look at the size of his tummy. So these guys ate a full buffalo yesterday. There's nothing left apparently this morning. They moved about five o'clock this morning. They were already on the move. So they must have eaten themselves silly yesterday. And that's why they're still very relaxed. Now, Tinio is a little bit further ahead. So he's just lying in the grass over there somewhere that you can just see his mane on top. So that's where Tinio is. So there we go. All four Birminghams. In case you didn't believe us, there's the fourth one lying in the long white grass. But this is absolutely beautiful. To see these four together is very cool. Like I'm I'm very, very happy about this. It's been a very long time that we've had these guys around, so I'm incredibly thrilled to have all of them. And then the fact that Byron's got a leopard on top of all of this just makes things that much better. Fumo is fast asleep. I wonder now there's another vehicle that's going to be approaching shortly so I wonder if he might just pop up his head when the other vehicle joins the sighting. Although he looks as though he's fast asleep. If he didn't pop his head up for us while we were walking here I doubt that, or driving here should I say, we didn't walk here, um, I doubt that he's going to pop his head up for another vehicle. But you can see, look at the color of his mane and, and his body in comparison to both in Suko and Nena is not quite as dark. He's still got the smallest mane of the four of them and his mane is 
a little bit of black around the edges but his body color is also a lot lighter than what we see on the other Birmingham's the other Birmingham's the two that we've just seen they tend to have a much darker sheen and then Tinio's is also a little bit darker than Mfumo interestingly enough though Mfumo seems to be the one that is tolerated the most by the Nkuhuma pride and Tinio as well I suppose the two of them do spend a lot of time with the Nkuhuma pride but they seem to be a lot more tolerated than Nena and Nsuku. Nena and Nsuku seems to get a little bit more of a colder reception from these Inkahumas than what these two do. It's an interesting thing. I wonder why that is. At the end of the day, they're all big males and they've all mated with the, the Inkahuma pride, but it just seems as the Inkahumas have a little bit more kind of faith in the, the two uh, not-so-dominant boys. Leo, are you wondering who's the biggest of the B-boys? Um, Leo, I would say difficult actually. I haven't seen them all together for a while, so it's now just watching them here. You kind of it's it's hard because they're not lying close to one another. But for me, Nena looks as though he's bulkiest of them, and or tallest, should I say? Maybe not bulkiest, but tallest. And then in Suko and Tinio are also quite bulky individuals. Unfortunately, I think Mfumo is a little smaller than the other three. It, but I'm not 100% sure. I think it's going to be a good comparison when they hopefully all come together up there and we can actually see them next to one another. It'll help to be able to work out who is actually the biggest of the grouping. It's an interesting thing because it's been so long that they've been together that you see them on their own and they all look individually beautifully big and, and strong and, and strapping. But as things go on and as time you know changes, you, you kind of don't notice it. So when they're all together, it will help us to be able to just determine who's the biggest. There's definitely bigger footprints. So there's some that have larger footprints than others. I find that Tinio has got really big feet. So his feet are quite large in comparison to Mfumo. And then Nena and Nsuko are also quite large feet. They're not the same as the Matimbas though. The Matimbas had massive, massive feet in comparison to these guys. You can see a bit of blood around the claw area there. I wonder if that wasn't a little claw injury when dragging his feet if he was helping with killing of a buffalo. It sometimes does happen that they do do this. But talking about kills and talking about feet and injuries and those kind of things, I'm very happy to report that Shadow, for those of you that are interested as to what's been happening with Shadow and how she's doing and whether or not she's okay at the moment, but the good news is that Shadow is fine. She is actually on an Impala kill today, so she got an Impala this morning and she's been feeding, which is great news. So I don't know if the cub was there, but they do have food, which means that at least Shadow's front leg must be coming right because she wouldn't be able to pull down big animals like that if she was in serious pain. So that's great news and hopefully it will mean that we'll start to see Shadow moving around back in her normal healthy way and that she'll be just fine but the fact that she's finding food means that there's really not too much to worry about and, and particularly big food items like that the problem is is that I'm sure if she hasn't put it up a tree she will lose it this afternoon which is typical of Shadow I don't know why she doesn't put carcasses up in the tree as much as some of the other leopards around here but you would think she would have learnt after all these hyenas that have stolen them but she seems to just kind of be happy with the fact that she feeds and then they take it maybe she's a successful enough hunter that she just finds the food that she needs when she needs it Look at those big grey skies in the distance. It almost looks like rain might be coming this evening. I hope not. It would be nice to finish our drive dry. As much as I like the rain and we need it, it would be better if the rain only came after drive because it's a bit cold to have rainy weather on top of all of this. So let's hope that the rain stays away for now. But it is a very, very ominous looking sky, isn't it? But beautiful with the male line under the heavy clouds. So I believe a lot of you are thankful about the shadow update. Well, it's an absolute pleasure. And it's luckily we have friends in other parts of the reserve that can keep us updated. Apparently she's on Arethusa is what I the update that I got is. So she's not too far from our boundary. So maybe tomorrow morning we'll go and have a little look around for her and maybe we get lucky if, if she hasn't put that carcass up in the tree. Bless you, Senzo. Are you alright there? Bit of dust up the nose. Yeah? Senzo is trying not to sneeze too loudly and rock the camera. So if there was a little shake. It's okay, it's just Senzo having a little sneeze. It is that time of the year where it's a bit dusty, so it gets into your nose and you unfortunately have to sneeze at the most inopportune times. Um. 
Shelley, you want to know which season is busier for visitors that come to the Sabi Sands? Shelley, um, winter months generally are busier. The reason for that is that we have very few insects in the winter months, so less chance of mosquitoes and varying other insects. Although, to be fair, we do have insects, but not as bad as everyone makes out. It's it's not the worst place I've been in the world for insects, but it's less mosquitoes, less chance of malaria, ticks, those kind of things. Also, the weather is far better in the winter in terms of rain. Um, in summer, we often get rain, and in, if you're a guest on safari, rain is never the best thing. So winter months tend to be a lot more popular. Um, it's also drier, which means game viewing tends to be a little bit on the better side because animals congregate around water sources, the bush thins out, it becomes a lot easier. And that? <laughs> Who knows what that was? Anyway, um, so you'll find that winter months are a lot more popular, but it also depends on the different countries. So different countries have different holidays at different times. So like now in August, a lot of Italians visiting um, South Africa because they get a lot of time off in August. You'll find June, July is a lot of American um, visitors because of their holidays, summer holidays that they get. And so that kind of happens around the world and we get different times that we'll get different sort of groupings of people. But it's Sabi Sands itself is actually pretty busy all year round. The only time that we go into a slight hiatus is generally just after New Year's and into February when it's the hottest and wettest part of the year. It really can be quite uncomfortable at that time and sometimes we get a little dip just after the Christmas New Year rush. Right, sounds like Byron has now fought off the Gremlins. I'm surprised any Gremlin would want to take on the mud wrestling champion of 2003, but they have. It seems like he's won though, so let's go across to Byron and see how he's doing with his leopard. <laughs> Tristan, thank you very much for holding the fort while we're trying to fend off these gremlins. Anyway, the signal seems to be back. Um, I've just positioned on the dam wall now, so we're still quite a distance from the leopard, but at least we've got signal. Um, and he hasn't moved. He hasn't moved, but what, a, what an interesting spot he has chosen to lie, lie on. And you can see where we are compared to some of the other vehicles. Now Shelly, you asked how often does a leopard need to feed? It all depends Shelly, much like the lions, it depends on the size of the prey that they have caught. Um, uh, leopards are very opportunistic though Shelly, so if a leopard for example hunted something like an impala, which is usually their preferred meal they tend to hunt a lot of impala because it's a perfect size for a single leopard um, it may take them two days two or three days to feed on an impala um, and then they won't have to hunt for another two or three days but I've seen leopards kill two or three impala um, young impala and hoist them in different trees and move from one kill to the other um, so if the opportunity is there they will hunt and they will kill and they will feed on on whatever they catch. Um, if it's a large kill, something like an Inyala perhaps or a Kudu, probably feed a lot longer and then won't have to feed again for a few more days. But I would say on average, Shelly, I mean it's difficult, but on average I would say at least twice a week a, a substantial meal is required. They also don't want to starve themselves and get too hungry. Isn't isn't he beautiful? I could sit here for, 